All right, so this is probably not going to be the most sexiest of videos, uh, but what I aim to do here in this video is to show you how you can connect Zapier. I think I pronounced that correct. Some people call it Zapier, but I'm sure it's Zapier because the things that you create are zaps, right? So Zapier. So how we can connect Zapier uh, to Shopify and how we can check for abandoned checkouts in Shopify with Zapier. Uh, and then we can perform an action with Zapier. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to have it for an email to fire off an email. So the way that I use this is that I use Zapier to check for abandoned carts. Once I get an abandoned cart, an email is then fired to myself and also BCC to my virtual assistant. And that means then I can check out that abandoned cart, give the customer a call, see if I can help them with their purchase um, and, and really just helps to generate those extra few sales from abandoned cart. I looked around and I couldn't find a good solution for this. So this is my solution of how to use Zapier to send out email notifications from Shopify. Again, because this is Zapier, you can build in any kind of uh, post action. So what, what I mean by post, I mean post collecting the data from Shopify. So once once Zapier polls and collects the information and figures out that there is an abandoned cart, there's lots and lots of built-in zaps of functions that you can get uh, Zapier to do. So we're going to use email, but, you know, just looking in this list here, and this is just some of the list, right? This is just the popular part of the list. You could get it to do something in Dropbox. You could get it, get it to create uh, a task in Asana. Uh, Trello, I think, is in there, right? You've got Google Sheets in there to create something in Google Sheets. You've got Gmail. You've got um, a whole host of integrations, right? So I guess the first thing to do is get started. And, and what we need to do is to create uh, an application or an app, sorry, within Shopify and, and a create a, what's called a private app. So if you go to the app section of Shopify, you'll see this make private apps. And what this does is enables you to create your own app that's only linked to this your to this store, your store. And what I've got here is just a demo store. So we're going to create this internal app for my store. Um, we'll give it a name. I'm going to just call it Zapier. Uh, me at me.com so just put in a, a dummy address and then we're going to give it access to the API um, so that external calls can be made so external access can be granted with a username and password an API key and an API password to certain areas of Shopify so if we expand this uh, and we'll give it access to the right place so we don't need access to blogs and comments and pages uh, customer details no uh, orders and transactions that is the only one that we need to give read access to so everything else sh should be no access so we don't need any else so the only one we're having here is access to orders transactions and fulfillments that enables to look, us to check out the abandoned car um, we don't need to add anything else we can just save that and that what that will give us then is an API key, right? Username and an API password. It gives us also gives us an example URL and a shared secret. Um, so, if I copy this example URL and just drop that into this uh, Notepad online Notepad, just so you can look at this. So, also, all we've got here is an, an HTTPS request. So, we've got a web re request using the API key, so username and password, right? And it's linked to the orders JSON segment of the API. Now, we're going to change this in a little later, but I just want you to understand that, that we've got the API key, we've got the API password, and we're connecting to uh, our Shopify store. We're looking at the admin API, and we're looking at orders.json. Now, there's a whole host of documentation for admin API, even storefront API within the Shopify uh, support. 
but we are looking to work with the admin API and we're going to look at abandoned checkouts. So um, there's a whole host of information in here about about this uh, about this section about the API. Um, the bit that we want is this one, is the admin uh, checkout JSON. So we're actually going to poll this, not the admin JSON. So I'm just going to reply this, and what I'm going to do here is just going to build the query. So I'm going to build the query that get that pulls the information from uh, Shopify. And I'm just going to test it in the browser to make sure that it works before I start before I even put it into JSON. So that's the first section. We're going to poll checkouts, right? And just go back to the top and just explain. There's two two sections within there, right? Checkout count and checkouts.json. We don't want checkouts count. We don't want to just uh, count the number of abandoned checkouts. We actually want to to in intersect or sorry intersect. We want to interact with the checkouts itself and look at some of the data within there. Okay. Now we can also uh, put some switches into here. So we can limit the amount of results, uh, and I like to limit this to 10, because we don't really need any more than 10. Um, we're only looking for single changes, and Zapier posts or polls every 15 minutes, so it's unlikely you're going to get more than 10, uh, 10 abandoned carts within 15 minutes. If you are, you really, really don't want to be doing it this way. You want to be looking at using the paid version of Zapier because it has built-in zaps for, for Shopify. But th this is a cheap, free way to do it. If you have, you know, less than 100, say, um, less than 100 abandoned checkouts in a month because that's the limit with Zapier is 100 uh, tasks per month. So, okay, that's the first part. We're going to limit it to 10. Uh, and then the, the final part, which isn't in the, the documentation, um, but we're going to order this, and it's just flown, just gone down to another line. So the next bit is uh, order created at descending. So uh, the results will will come in ascending order, which is not what we want. We don't want to put, have them in ascending order, the oldest first. We want them in, in descending, so the newest first. Um, so that's kind of built our query. Um, and just to show, if I go into orders... Um, these are just dummy data that I put in. Ch abandoned checkouts. There is an abandoned checkout there that I did 15 minutes ago. So if I take if I take that and pop that into a browser, that should pull me back the the JSON results. And yes, okay, that that will match. That data will match here. So you know that the poll of the the API is working. Okay. So, next part is then is to pass this is to input this into Z Zapier and tell Zapier to to check this URL every fifteen minutes. Every fifteen minutes is the built-in amount of time that it uses. So, this is a blank uh, vanilla Zapier account. I've not used this before, so I've just signed up, verified the email. What I'm going to do is create a new Zap in here. Yes, make a new Zap, and we'll get asked. What is the trigger to our zap, right? And there are a whole host of triggers, right? You can do a search through this list of triggers to find all the different triggers. So you can pull, uh, you know, if, if a card's created in Trello, send an email. If this happens, then that happens. So that there's a whole plethora of uh, combinations you can have with Zapier, and it's a, it's a, a fantastic tool. Uh, but the one that we are looking for is this webhooks that's already there. If you don't see it, you know, you can do a, a search here for webhooks, right? So webhooks by Zapier. And we are going to poll a URL. So we're going to do a retrieve poll. So it's going to go and check a URL that we give it. So we'll save that. And the URL that we're going to poll is the one that we just created here. So this URL has our... API key or API password, it's going to checkouts and it's going to bring us the last 10 che abandoned checkouts in descending order. Oops. So we'll drop that in the URL. Uh, what is the key within this JSON data? Well, as you see it there, the key is checkouts. That's the, the overall arching key of this JSON data. So we'll pop that in. 
Oops, I think I might have had a space there. And the duplication key is called ID. So that's how we have within the checkouts, how we can identify unique individual uh, objects, let's say. Okay, uh, I don't think there's anything else we need in that. No, our authentication is already in the URL, so we don't need any of this. We can continue with that. Okay, so it's going to say, make sure we have at least one recent poll created um, and make sure it matches the trigger. So, yeah, that looks good to me. We don't need to do anything there. Let's do a test. So, test successful, view your retrieved poll. So, we can have a look in there. And that will be the information of this abandoned checkout. It should have the, the customer name, the email, the address, the product, the price, right? So we've got all the information, you know, even extra information in there um, that you probably didn't realize it was capturing. So a whole host of information. So that's working. So Zapier is able to connect to Shopify and it's able to pull the latest abandoned carts. Perfect. Continue. What do we want to do next step? Like I said, we could have a whole host of uh, next steps here, right? We could we could create a task within uh, Asana. We could create a, a, something in a board, maybe in Trello, right? And if, if you had the free, free version, you can only create two-step Zapier. But if you had the paid version, you can actually go on and create multiple steps here. So the first step could be send an email. Second step could be create a task in Asana. Third step could be create an entry in a Google Sheet, right? And so on and so on. But we're only going to do do a two-step action here. So uh, I think it's just email. Yeah, email by Zapier. You could, if you have any of these uh, email providers or even something like uh, Zoho, you could connect it to Zoho emails and... and uh, authenticate against your Zoho mail server and use Zoho to send. The reason you want to might, might want to do that is you can actually create a, a HTML formatted email within that. So uh, I think there's even, yeah, there's even SMTP relays in there. So if you've got your own mail server or if you're using a mail service that gives you SMTP relay, you could use that too. Uh, so I'm just going to do email by Zapier basic one right send outbound email it's going to come from a custom domain of zapier email address okay and then it's going to ask us oh here at that it's going to ask us where we want to send it to what's the subject going to be and what is the body text right so uh, i'll just drop in a dummy address uh, We'll put in new, oops, new, new abandoned cart. And then what will be the content of our email? Um, what we can do here is we can actually add in fields from that earlier poll. So we could say uh, new abandoned cart at the top. Right, and then we can put in fields that could be, let's have a look, just having a look off screen here at what I've got. Uh, name, okay, so first one could be first name, customer first name, right? So that's pulled in the field that is polled, and then we could have customer last name, right? Customer last name. And it's given as an actual uh, preview of what they're going to look like. So the customer's first name, Banana, uh, and his last name is Man. We could put in here, if we look for, I think, phone number. I don't know if I actually put a phone number in, the abandoned car. Oops. I don't think I did. No, but we can put it in anyway. So you would want to put phone number here. There's no data. Um, you might want to put in the actual link to the abandoned cart so you can just click the link and go uh, straight to the abandoned cart so if we look in here look at the URL right so I'll copy this URL and, and just note that number there look 27901 so if I put this into 
the Zapier email. And then what I'm going to do is replace that because that's the dynamic part. That's the ID of that abandoned cart, right? So if I take that out and add in a field, which is ID, so that will build the URL. So we should have a link in our email there that will take us straight to the checkout. So we'll know the name, first name, last name, we'll know the phone number, and we'll have a link, right? Okay, and you can build this out with, with as many things as you like. Just have a look at the information that's pulled through, right? Um, any of this information that you see in here, price of the product, um, you might struggle with the item itself, the, the actual product itself, because it's probably all, yeah, line item. So it's probably all put into one line item look. So it, there's there's a lot of information there. You, you would probably want to break up, and you'd have to do that with with uh, different filters in the in the zap. So you couldn't do that really. You could put all that information in, but it it's all going to come into as one big line. So, but you can put in the price and total weight and all kind of stuff anyway uh that's it really we can put in who it's from we can put in a reply we can put in a, a cc or a bcc so we can send this to our va va at the same time uh forcing line breaks to do his spacing let's just continue uh and then it will test zapier so at this point you can send that test well it's obviously not going to go anywhere is it dummy and dummy um, but I will just quickly stop the video, change that, and send one, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it arrives. Okay, so test successful. The email was sent. So uh, if I just pull up the email, there you go. So new abandoned car, banana man, there's no phone number, obviously, and then we have our direct link straight to our abandoned car. So if I click that, that should take us straight there. All right, I hope that's been of use. Uh, again, don't forget that this this part here you, doesn't have to be email. could be any of the built-in zaps that you want. And obviously, if you want to be a bit more adventurous, you've got the whole API here that you should know now how to build it out and you can have a look at, you know, a whole host of information that you might want to pull out. You know, new orders. When a new order comes in, you might want to perform an action or, um, you know, a whole host of stuff. All right. So the final step of that would be just to uh, finish that and uh, name the zap. So just going to call it AC for abandoned carts. And then turn it on. Um, what that will do now is that will, as it says... Um, this is a a new account so a new account for 14 days is on premium so it's going to poll every five minutes but uh the actual free version won't do that it will be every 15 minutes so um you can see here look the the options that you've got so the free plan is uh five zaps 100 tasks right and every 15 minutes but obviously, because I just signed up, I'm on this plan now. So, yeah, that's it. Zap created, zap finished. That can sit there now and, and keep checking. I'll turn it on. And keep checking for abandoned carts. And as soon as an abandoned cart is registered and uh, Zapier polls Shopify, so it's only going to do it every 15 minutes. As soon as it gets that abandoned cart, new one, notices a new one, it will move on to the next step. And in our example here will be fire an email okay sorry that's a bit scrappy but um it's quite a complicated thing and i just wanted to throw it together and see if i could help anyone out uh if you've got any comments please make a please drop a comment in the the video uh, on the youtube and if i can help in any way i will try my best too all right thanks for watching bye bye